Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. In this video, we are going to discuss about the procedure for design of one-way slab. Once we are given with a slab or slab system, so first we need to check whether the slab is a one-way slab or two-way slab. So for a slab to be considered as one-way slab, its R or its aspect ratio should be less than 0.5. If the R value aspect ratio, the ratio of shorter span to larger span, if it is less than 0.5, then it will be considered as one-way slab. We also need to see the end supports. For example, if we have a slab system or slab which is supported on all four sides, so in that case, we only need to check the aspect ratio, the ratio of smaller side over larger side. But in case if we have a slab which is supported only on two sides, for example these two sides, so in that case it will be also a one-way slab and this is this will be one way if the R is less than 0 0.5 but in this case if it is only supported on two opposite sides, so in that case it will be essentially a one-way slab. So one more thing we need to understand in case of one-way slab, we provide the main reinforcement along the shorter span in case of a slab system or a slab panel which is supported on all four sides, so main reinforcement will be provided in this direction. But in case if it is supported on two faces or two sides, so in that case the span will be in this direction, so main reinforcement will be provided in this direction perpendicular to these spores. Okay, after deciding the type of slab, whether it is one way or two way, the next step is to calculate the edge minimum or the thickness of the slab. So edge minimum is calculated based on the specification given in the ACI code section 7.3.11. The minimum thickness of solid non pre stressed one way slab it is given based on the end condition. So for one simply supported one way slab, the minimum value of edge, the thickness should be L over 20 and here L is the span of the slab, effective span of the slab. And for one end continuous it is L over 24, for both end continuous it is L over 28 and for cantilever beam, for cantilever slab it is L over 10. And from these formulas or from these specifications, if we get the value for example 117 millimeter. So we need to round this value to a multiple of 10 or multiple of 5. So either we can round it to 120 millimeter. So we always need to round this value to the upper one. But the selected thickness of the slab should not be less than 110 millimeter for rooms and not less than 75 millimeter for sun shades. So after selecting the thickness of slab, the next step is to calculate the effective span. So it can be lesser of the following. The first one is we can consider it as ln min clear span, the span between these spots, plus h by 2 on the left side and h by 2 on the right side. So this much span. So this will be our effective span. So if we sum up these two values, so it will be ln plus h mean we will add half of the thickness of slab on one side and half of the thickness of slab on the other side or the second option is l can be ln plus 1 by 2 of width of the sport plus 1 by 2 width of sport so width of sport on this side as well as width of sport on this side and it will become ln plus width of sport. So sh smaller of this value as well as smaller of this value. So we need to consider smaller out of these two values as a effective span value. So actually we need to consider the effective span instead of the clear span because movement will be maximum at that point. Not at the face of the sport, it will be maximum at the center of the sport or at a distance h by 2 from the face of the sport inside the sport. Okay, here h is the depth of the slab and ln is the clear distance between the sport. And second option is actually missing in this slide. So we need to add l 
is equal to ln plus width of support so we will compare this value and this value and select the lesser of these two okay after that the next step is calculate the load acting on the slab so we need to consider the dead load which is self weight of the slab so once we have the thickness of the slab we can calculate its self weight which is h multiplied by the density of the slab and plus the density of or the load of the floor finishes so again we know the thickness of the floor finishes and their density so we can calculate the dead load and for live load we need to select its value from the ASCE code so this is actually based on the occupancy of the building so based on the use of that floor or that slab we can select the value of live load for example for residential building its value is 200 kilogram per meter square and for other buildings for example for educational building for office building its value will be different so after calculating the dead load and selecting the live load the next step is to calculate the factor load per unit width so we will calculate the factor load based on this load combination 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load and then this value will be in kilo newton per meter square uniformly distributed we need to convert this to a line load by multiplying it with this unit width one meter width actually while designing a one-way slab or a slab we consider a unit width of the slab we consider a strip of unit width and then this strip will be designed as a rectangular section so while calculating the load we need to convert the load into a line load kilonewton per meter load okay after that we need to calculate the moments and moment can be calculated either directly based on the sports especially in case of simply supported slab or a cantilever slab we can calculate if it is a simply supported slab so we can calculate the bending moment as wl square over 8 the maximum moment will be at the center wl square over 8 and in case of a cantilever slab if it has a sport like this and cantilever portion so in that case if it is subjected to udl the moment will be equal to this w into l the moment will be w into l into l by 2 w l square by 2 so we can either directly calculate the moments based on the static analysis or we can use the coefficients for continuous slabs given in the ACI code so these coefficients we will discuss in the later stages when we will discuss the design of continuous slab okay after calculating the bending moments next we need to select or we need to calculate the effective depth so that is actually if we have a slab like this a unit width of slab and we are going to provide a reinforcement over here and we have selected a clear cover of for example 20 millimeter and we are using this bar of 13 millimeter diameter so in that case the effective depth will be the distance from the top of or the, from the compression side up to the centroid of this reinforcing bar so it will be h minus clear cover minus half of the die of this bar so db divided by 2 so h minus clear cover minus half of the diameter of the bar so diameter of bar normally in case of slab we use 10 millimeter bar 13 millimeter bar or in some cases we can use 15 millimeter diameter bar okay after calculating the effective depth we need to check it with the minimum depth requirement so d minimum is can be calculated by using this expression mu over 0 0.205 fc prime into b square root so whatsoever is the value of d minimum so the our selected depth or our provided depth should be more than this d minimum value if our 
calculated effective depth is less than the minimum then we need to increase the thickness of the slab or we can reduce the diameter of the longitudinal bars are the main reinforcement okay after that we need to check for the shear so normally in case of slabs the shear is okay we do not consider this check in case of especially one way slab or beam supported slab but if it is a column supported slab then we need to check for the shear for one way as well as for two way shear so shear check in slab is normally satisfied so no shear enforcement is provided in case of slabs but this is for beam supported slab but for column supported slab we need to provide the reinforcement or we need to provide the drop panels okay next is to calculate a as required for one meter width the unit width that we have considered for the design so a strip of one way slab is designed as singly reinforced rectangular section having unit width so we consider that strip as a rectangular section with the depth as h and width as 1 meter so it will be considered as singly reinforced beam and we can calculate the area of the reinforcement by using these expressions so here actually the nominal capacity of the rectangular section we considered it equal to the applied bending moment and that nominal capacity is given by 0.9 asfy time d minus a by 2 and here a is asfy over 0.85 fc prime b so to calculate the as the reinforcement if we see we have as in this expression as well as as in this expression so either we can substitute the value of a in this equation and then we can write this equation in terms of as and it will be a quadratic equation and by substituting the other values we will get two values of as and the positive value will be considered as the actual value of the as or otherwise we can use a hit and trial method iteration method so first we will assume the value of a and then substitute in this equation to calculate as value and then substitute that as value over here to calculate the value of a and compare it with this value if it is not equal to this a value the assumed value then again substitute the calculated value over here and calculate as and then substitute this as over here and calculate a value and keep on doing this iteration until we get the same a as we have substituted over here to calculate the as value once we have the constant value of a mean our results are converged the value of a is converged so then we can use that value of a to calculate the as value or otherwise we can use these expressions for reinforcement ratio rho is equal to omega into 1 minus square root 1 minus 2.614 r over fc prime here r is actually mu over bd square and omega is 0.85 fc prime over fy so we can calculate omega and r and then we can substitute in this expression to calculate the value of rho so once we have the value of rho we can calculate the as value by multiplying this rho with b and effective depth so after calculating the value of as we need to check this as for the minimum reinforcement requirement and the minimum reinforcement as minimum is given by 0 0.0018 times b d if the calculated as is more than as minimum then it's okay otherwise we need to consider the as equal to as minimum okay after once we have once we have calculated the as the next step is to select the diameter and spacing of the main bars so the steel calculated for the unit strip width is to be provided all along the slab width so this is done by providing the bars at a regular spacing s if ab is the area of a single bar effective for width equal to s and as is the area of steel which is required for a unit width strips so then we can write the following ab over s mean the area which is suitable or which is effective for width s and 
AS which is required for 1 meter width or 100 millimeter width. So we can write these two ratios. So these two ratios will be equal and from here we can write that S is equal to AB over AS into 1000. So by using this expression we can calculate the spacing, required spacing of the main bars. Okay, once we have calculated the S, now we need to check it for S maximum and S minimum. S should be more than S minimum but less than S maximum. And for S maximum, the ACI code have given some guidelines. So S maximum should be least of the following, 3 times H, H is the thickness of the slab are 450 millimeter or we can use these expressions to calculate the S maximum value. Here CC is the clear cover, FY is the yield strength of the main reinforcement. And similarly the minimum value of spacing S minimum is given as 90 millimeter. So it should be more than 90 millimeter. So if our S is less than s minimum then we will consider it equal to s minimum or if it is more than s maximum then we will consider it equal to s maximum if it is in between s minimum and s maximum then we will consider the calculated value okay once we have calculated the as and based on the as we have decided the number diameter of bar and the spacing the next step is to provide the main reinforcement and the main reinforcement is provided parallel to the span as we have discussed in the beginning of the video. So for a continuous slab we can curtail or bend up the positive re reinforcement and for negative steel we need to see how much steel is already available and how much is the remaining and we will provide the remaining amount of steel. So after providing the main reinforcement parallel to the span we need to provide the minimum reinforcement to account for the temperature and shrinkage perpendicular to the main reinforcement at right angle to the main reinforcement and that reinforcement is given by the ACI code for grade 20 steel we need to provide 0.2 percent of the B, B into H or we can say the raw value is 0.002 and for 420 grade it is 0.18 percent of the area of the slab and raw will be 0 0.0018 and if the grade of the steel is different than these 2, 420 or 280 so we can use this expression to calculate the reinforcement ratio and it should be at least more than 0 0.0014 and after calculating the reinforcement ratio we can calculate the AS area of steel by multiplying raw with B and H and then based on this area we can calculate the spacing as we have discussed in the previous slide AB over AS into 1000 and after calculating this we need to check the spacing for minimum and maximum values and in case of temperature and shrinkage steel the maximum value is 5 times H or 420 the least of these two values. The next is a design example that will be discussed in the next video.